So the one commandment that I've been trying to to really follow is judge not. It freed me. When I quit judging, it just opened everything. Hey guys, JB in the house in the Wolf's Den. I have to tell you that if there is one guest I always was knew I had to have on this show, right? When I was contemplating even doing it from the very moment I even was offered to do it or thought about it, there was one person that said that if he doesn't come on, the show would never, it couldn't be complete the whole experience because without this person who's sitting across from me, namely Mr. Tommy Chong, okay? Hey. Nothing would be happening like this in my life because Tommy, if you know the story, is the person who I ended up in prison with, yeah. not in the same prison, but sharing a freaking bunk together, right? <laughs> and the only down, the only bad part of that was that Tommy was there doing a year and a day for selling bongs, like glass pipes on the internet. So I had to say to myself, well, if they gave him a year and a day, the equivalent would be 10,000 years for what I did. So I was, I kinda, <laughs> but then I realized you shouldn't have been there for a minute, so it didn't really apply. So I felt as a God almighty, a year for that. Like, I mean, that's a whole story. So well, I want to ask you, but Tommy, I love you. Um, without you. you, none of this would have ever happened, so thank you. Thank you. And hey, listen, look, look, at, look at where you've come from, yeah, where we were. It, um, <laughs> Incredible. One thing I'll tell you, if there's one outcome for this, I don't know what you're, if you have anything in mind, but for me, I'm guessing there's like a whole generation of, of kids that maybe are not as familiar with you as my generation is. Mm -hmm. I know you cross over to every every age. Yeah, still crossing. I, I know you, yeah. But, but if you just get a chance, anyway, to watch the old stuff that he did. I mean, and new stuff is great too, but I, I have to say I'm part, you know, who? how many times did I fucking, you know, fall asleep <laughs> watching Up in Smoke, okay? When I was, and the pot was different back then, right? It was not the fucking same as it is today. Back then you could really smoke a few joints and hang out and, yeah. and not like end up in the hospital for paranoia. And now yeah. you gotta be really careful, right? Yeah, you do. Well, you know, I wouldn't know. I, I, I'm, I'm oblivious to it all now. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. Did, did you ever have a bad trip and that smoke too much and get paranoid? I've never gotten paranoid. I mean, yeah, I got paranoid just over my love, my wife. Right. That's the only thing. I've no, but not from like, you know, when you smoke pot. pot you, I, I know it. A lot of no, people. Bad trip. Like, yeah, I guess you call it, but like a lot of people, like with, especially with the yeah. strong stuff they have now with the THC is like 20% or something, right? You get this like panic attack. Well, well, with me, I've always known it was medicine. And so yeah, I, if you take too much medicine, it's, it's bad for you. But you know, you know what? Give, you know what gives you paranoia? What? A bad conscience. I, well, no, but I, I admit that I have a lot to be paranoid about. Not right now. I love the way I live my life today. But but I, New Yorkers like are, are naturally paranoid because, <laughs> because you know they don't know who's got a gun. You know because they got a gun. That kind of thing. You know, <laughs> it depends on what you're doing. With me, I was never. Uh, you know, I was always kind of laid back and also on a very uh, high spiritual path. Right. Ever since I can remember. So, so that's, uh, that's what kept me down, you know. What was the, how old were you when you smoked your first joint? 17. Is that, oh, fuck, that's old. I know. I smoked when I was like 12, my friend. I, I know, but I was, I, was, I, I meant I was young, but I was, I was know. born in 1938. Okay, right, so. Uh, it was 1957 when I first oh. s smoked my first joint, and it, it had a profound effect on me. I immediately quit school the next day. <laughs> So it was a positive effect, <laughs> considering yeah. the nature of our education. No, I realized, I realized <laughs> what uh, I needed to learn wasn't in the school. Right. You know, it was on the street. And I was a musician at the time, blues musician. So I, I uh, pursued... Well, how did so how'd you get off? You got off? How would you get... Do you... Well, a jazz musician from uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, where I was born, he um, showed up from L.A. with a joint and a Lenny Bruce record. And it was a gift for me, and he handed both to me, and I took the joint, put it in my pocket, and we lit up one of his, because <laughs> I wanted to save it. You know, I wasn't sure about it. You know, right. it was reefer. And so... They uh, demonized it really yeah, bad, yeah, that, right? So, like, you know, so, one, you know, you'd be killing people in the streets, right? Yeah, so I, I took a couple of tokes, and I heard music I'd never heard before. You know, the, in the, it was, uh, in fact, I remember the tune. It was Lonely Woman by Ornette Coleman. 
And I heard that music, and all of a sudden I could see the lonely woman, and then I knew right then that I was on to something really, really, really good. But I, I did the rat test. You know what the rat test is? No. When rats see something that they're not sure of, they'll take a little nibble, <laughs> and then they'll crawl off into the corner, and they'll sit there to see if it's going to make them sick or kill right. them or anything else. And if it doesn't do any harm to them, they'll go back and eat a little more, oh. and then a little more until finally, you know, they'll, they'll do it. That's how they, they survive, you know, because there's so much poison. Around. Right. And so I, I did the rat test. I, <laughs> I smoked a little bit, sat back, seen what it did. And then I got a little more and a little more. And then, then, then I graduated, of course, to uh, do uh, cocaine and, and, and pills. So do you think that marijuana is a gateway drug? Oh, totally. It is, right? <laughs> totally. I would agree. I mean, totally. I guess I'm living proof. Totally. Of that, but but I, it's more of a doorway drug. <laughs> Meaning? Meaning... When you take a... Uh, Gateway's hit. a negative connotation. Doorway yeah. is opening up your consciousness, well, right? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, you take a hit and you walk through the door. You know, first of all, you take a hit and you think of something really brilliant. But what you need is behind a door. But the minute you walk behind that door, you can't remember what the hell you're <laughs> looking for. <laughs> so that's why I keep a bong in every room in my house. <laughs> so that when I go through that door, I see a bong, I know exactly what I got to do. I fired up. All right, guys, ready for this? The Wolf's Den is now brought to you by Skillshare.com. That's Skillshare.com. Guys, let me tell you something. You know that I always say that at the end of the day, it's not just how hard you work. It's the strategies you know. You get it? You have to know what to do. You can't just work hard. That's what Skillshare is all about. Skillshare is an online learning community, meaning... Everything is online video training, the state-of-the-art learning platform, and you get to learn about anything like photography, creative writing, even things like entrepreneurship. You go to Skillshare.com, and you have the access to all the information you can need to become successful at things that you want to do, right? Skillshare.com, and here's the deal, ready? You get two months free to check it out because you're on this podcast, all right? It's no stretch of the imagination that I'm a big believer in online learning. You know, I have my own courses, right? Skillshare is awesome, okay? Check it out for all you need. There's all different types. I think there's like 10,000 courses. 10,000 courses on this, all right? And they give you two months to go check it out. You can't go wrong. What's the worst that can happen? Eh, you don't like it? Fair enough. You just, you know, cancel. But I don't think that's going to happen. This is an awesome platform with awesome programs. Give it a whirl. You won't be sorry. All right, guys, here's the deal. I am here to talk to you about a very important subject, your erections. This is very important to me, at least, right? If you like sex, like I do, and like I'm sure all of you do, right, then you probably heard of Blue Chew, right? It's chewable, right? The same active ingredient as the old stuff, the old outdated Viagra and all that old stuff, right? Well, this is the new evolution that you can actually chew hits you in half the time powerful stuff how powerful let me just tell you right i'm gonna give you my wolf analogies here right you could like take blue chew and your erection you could hit a home run in the world series with this thing that's how hard it is okay a bottom line you could hurt someone with blue chew blue chew is this things that you use to teach someone a lesson you show them who's boss with blue chew right that's why i like it seriously no blue chew works it gives you that ability to go once, two, three rounds, right? You're a superstar with Blue Chew. Seriously. And, you know, they, they, they originally invented this stuff. It's like a blood pressure. Many years, they thought it was for blood pressure, but this is back in the day. Like, they first invented this, this, this ingredient, right? This, the, the, the level of erection you get from this. I'm, I'm dead serious. It is like nothing you've ever seen before. This is not normal stuff. This is like studly, studly stuff, and you got to try it. I promise you, and here's the ready, Blue Chew is going to let you try it for free because you're on my podcast, all right? So here's what you do. Blue Chew, B-L-U-E, Blue Chew, C-H-E-W dot com. Enter the promo code WOLF. You get it for free. How about that? Just pay $5 shipping and handling. You have to check it out. I, I, I'm telling you, I think last time I said you could, um, you could use this, the DEA could use your erection to knock down a crack house door. It's even bigger than that. I, I'm seriously, I, I, let's use the, a home run in the World Series, bases loaded, Blue Chew comes to the rescue. Seriously, if you love sex, you got to check this stuff out. Give it a shot. Believe me, you won't be sorry. No, it's... it's... Do you still, you still smoke a lot? Oh, yeah. 
I, I smoke here, not a lot. I never had, did smoke a lot. Even in the movies, it was all fake. Right, you know? I get it. But, uh, How no. could you fucking act being high, right? I mean, right? <laughs> You're great at acting high, though. No. Yeah, That's like yeah, a yeah, fucking yeah, talent. Yeah. Yeah. It was all acting. But the uh, smoking, the weed itself, you know, I, I, I'm a real pussy. I, I get high just thinking about it. <laughs> Contact do. high. Yeah, that? I do. Yeah. I do. And so, uh, you know, and I've accidentally done too much. Like there's, there's a Rick Simpson oil out. And, and because when I had cancer, I started doing a, a Rick Simpson oil because it cured his. Right. And so I tried it, but I did too much. You're only supposed to do a little rice grain, little grain of rice kind of thing, right. you know, with the oil, just and a little bit. I took a little bit too much. I took a, uh, a dollop. Mm. And? And I was almost in a coma for two days. Yeah. I was I was stuck in my basement. I couldn't get out of the chair. No, and, and, and my wife, she froze in a doorway. We, we, we ate pot <laughs> cookies on like one New Year's Eve, and she's like, I can't turn left. <laughs> I'm like, she was like, can't turn left. It was like, she's like Zoolander. She couldn't turn left, right? She's not, that was one of the worst experiences I ever had with that. Was that we ate this. It's, it was smoking it, it comes and goes. Yeah. When you eat it, right? It's, oh, you eat it. Well, because it's a time release. Yeah. You know, you don't. You think, ah, I don't feel anything, so I better eat the rest of it. And that's, that's when you get in trouble. One time I did a, a gummy bear because I had the flu. Because, see, it's really good for you if you're sick. Because what happens, pot affects the brain. Right. The brain affects your immune system, and it controls your whole body. Right. And the one thing you need uh, to cure, you know, when animals get sick, especially dogs, they'll crawl off in the corner somewhere and just lay there and sleep, you know, just let the body heal itself. And that's what pot does to people. It, it, it immobilizes the fear factor. Right. And, and so that you're just there in your body, and you're just trying to figure out where you are, you know. And your body calms down, and, and the immune system kicks in. And then, so I, I, I had the flu. I took too much. <laughs> and then I had a photo session where I was supposed to pose with people. And it was like uh, breakfast at Bernie's, you know, because I was, they had to move my dead body around. <laughs> and then I'd sit there and pose with people. So, but, so yeah. there's so much that I could talk to you about, because I think there's really one thing that people would love to hear, and like with us together, right? I must have told the story a thousand, I mean, ten thousand times about how I walk in the jail, and Mrs. Strickland, remember? <laughs> she puts us in the same cell together, I guess, to keep an eye on us, right? Mm -hmm. And from that moment, all this my life takes this radical turn, yeah. and I've told the whole story. But I'd love to see, I'd love to, and how I met you, what I thought, but I would love to reverse it and kind you of hear my uh, version, yeah, your <laughs> version of the story, yeah. And, and you know, and I'd love to hear. And you could don't pull any punch if someone's an asshole or a cocksucker or out of my mind or anything. Whatever you happen to well, think. You, well, you uh, weren't a cocksucker. That's whatever, right. whatever you thought. Like I'd like to know. Like you, so you guys, you heard I was there. We got moved. We got moved in together. At yeah. the beginning, it was a third guy. We got him moved out quickly, yeah. and it was just the two of us in the cell, yeah. right? Yeah. But what? So you know, it's. I'll take from. Let me take it to a certain point. I, you were there writing a book, the uh, mm -hmm. the I Ching, which is an mm -hmm. amazing book, and you should all buy this stuff seriously. I read this book. It was amazing. I remember when you were writing it. Yeah, I uh, Chong. I, I Chong, I Chong, sorry, yeah, yeah. About, and it was like your version of that. That was like the takeoff. Yeah. Right? It was really amazing. And um, and I and then I would tell you stories. Then you said you got to write a book. I was like, I don't know how to write. But that's all I want to say. I want to take it the other way. And you tell me your version of the story. Well, or the audience. Like, I, yeah. I remember you, you would be playing tennis, and then you'd come off the tennis, and you'd look at me, and I'm writing away. And then you said, wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? I told you I was writing a book. He said, "Oh, I think I'll write a book." And then you started writing. You wrote a couple of pages and you handed them to me, and I read them. And I, but here's the thing: normally, I would have anybody hand me uh, a sample of their writing, I would have said, "Oh, that's great. Keep going. You're on the right track. Everything." But I knew you were a genius. Thank you. And so there's only one way to to jar geniuses. <laughs> <laughs> is to kind of like knock them down, you know. And so when you handed me those pages, I read it, and it was incredible. But it was, you could feel Tom Wolfe influence in there. Right. A lot. In fact, I felt like I was reading a passage from one of his books, Bonfires of right. the Vanities. Right. And so when I handed it back to you, I saw a genius right away. I said, oh, shit. But I said, you haven't written shit, really. 
And you, you were shocked. You, you looked at me like, what? I was like, <laughs> you, you said, what? You have a talent for calling a horse's ass a horse's ass. So I was yeah, like, yeah. I, was I like, says, I says, uh, and then you said, well, what do you suggest? I said, write those stories that you told me, we were telling me about every night. I said, and, and then, and you said, yeah. And I said, and there's a most of rule. That was the, that was the whole that thing. That was it. I said, the most of, and you said, what's that? I says, you can't just have a smoke a joint, you know, that's boring. You got to smoke more dope than anybody has ever smoked in the world. Of, you know, because that's, the extra, it, it, it catches the eye of people, you know. The, the Bible is full of... Most of. Most of, yeah. Like, Moses didn't just walk across the water. He stopped the fucking river. Right. <laughs> he stopped the water on either side. Right. And then the people went across just before the Pharaoh. You know, that's the most of. Right. And that's what people resonate in the head. And so you, you didn't take the advice that, that kindly. <laughs> you you kind of snatched the papers out of my hand, <laughs> and you fucked off, and you went off by yourself. And then you never showed me anything after that. You went off, and you, and you wrote, and you wrote, and you wrote, and you wrote, and you wrote. To the point where you wouldn't eat. I was, yeah, I you got weren't obsessed even with it. I got obsessed. I took, well, you're right, you jarred me when, I, when you said it to me. It actually was a little bit earlier. So I think, you know, obviously it's my, sto my life. So I, what happened was actually, it was actually, it was just before I, I had read Tom Wolf, and the pages were really bad. And you said to me, you looked and said, it kind of sucks is what you said to me. <laughs> and then when you saw my Tom Wolf, there was one incident before, then you said, that's Tom Wolf, yeah. and then you made you kept, and then and then once I was like, "Fuck!" I really thought I nailed it, and then I just went into a hole. And I literally holed up you for did. like, and I just, I just disappeared. I remember you disappeared. I know. I never saw you. I just like I in my remember my own mind is how I, I was like, "I'm gonna crack this code." You weren't even coming to eat with us I anymore. You, I, you just I drifted <laughs> off. I know. You just well, take old Jordan. Whatever you did, you just went in a hundred thousand percent <laughs> into like you became a writer. It was incredible, man. Uh, well. I mean, I wrote, you know, what I wrote, I wrote a, a you know, lightweight kind of easy little thing, you know, that was easy, and I had editors help me and everything else, but you, <laughs> man, you just went into this, well, like you do. <laughs> You're the most of guy I've ever met. <laughs> you are, man. I mean, you know, you know when I was watching the tape there? <laughs> I saw this young kid standing outside a old lady's house or a lady's house with some meat. <laughs> saying, <"Listen."> My early <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen, I, I got an order that the people won't take, and I don't know what I'm going to do. If I take it back, it's going to spoil. And, <laughs> and the lady would go, oh, come on here. Come here, you poor guy. boy, right? Come on here, you good-looking guy here. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about, like, okay, so here you are in jail, right, mm -hmm. with me. Just you shouldn't be there. Like there's just there's no, 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 no. It was not. It was no. no. Definitely should have been. I should have been there in jail for what yeah, though? For sure, for my own growth. Oh, but not because of the crime. Oh no, no, no. That no, was no. that. That was. It's did immaterial. you ever feel resentful? No, never, never, not at all. Neither did I. But I was. Saying, no, it was. It, it's the cosmos. It's the universe. It was ordained. I knew I was going to jail long before I ever went to jail. Way back when I was like. 15, 16 years old. I used to meet guys, you know, at parties and that, and they just got out of jail in Canada and had nowhere to go. And so, I, you know, my mom was really cool, my dad was cool, and so I'd say, well, you can come and stay with me for a while. And so they would, our house was like a halfway, a halfway house for criminals in, in Canada, and that was in the 50s. Really? And so the prisons there were, were brutal. They had a no uh, uh, silence rule in, in the federal, in the uh, provincial presence, meaning that if when you walk through the door, there's a big sign over the thing that says, do not talk unless you're t given permission. Really? You could not say a word. You could not make a noise from the time you walked in to the time you walked out, the silence system. Talk. Oh. And, and that's how tough it was. And they also, if you got caught with rape or anything, they gave you lashes. The cat of nine tails. You got so, so many lashes, and if you violated any of the rules, they give they give you a strap. It was a, a five foot like a cricket bat, and they bend you over a, a, a sounds like Singapore nowadays. It was, <laughs> and they would bend you over and then strap you down, and then you were sentenced to like 
two or three or maybe five hits with the paddle, and usually you passed out after the first hit. It was so, and, and then it took you uh, like a year to heal. Wow. So that was the kind of prison that they had in Canada. And so, and then when they kicked you out, there was nowhere to go. So my, uh, so we kind of helped out a few people. And I would hear these stories that, that these guys would tell me about prison and that, you know. And, and in fact, one guy gave me this tattoo. What's it? A it's a white supremacy tattoo. <laughs> I had no idea. Wow, you're like the furthest thing in the world, I'd say, yeah. for white supremacy. It was, yeah, you know, it was a <laughs> hand. Like the anti-white supremacy. It, it, it was, it, and he was Irwin McCann. He he just passed away, but he, he he was an old biker. Really? And he 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 gave me this tattoo, hand like handmade, two pencils tied together with uh, needles, and dip it into ink, and then it's going to your skin. Oh, it was crazy. But that, that it was, so I, I always had a premonition that I was going to jail. Even when I was signing bongs at the company, that was my only job, signing them. And I would say to the bong, well, what are you trying to tell me? And then a writer wrote a, a script about bongs going to jail. And then I was watching uh, Shawshank Redemption over and over and over again. Great movie. And then next thing you know, uh, the, the, the feds had been surveilling me for a year and they raided my house. And it was almost like, I've been expecting you. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Well, do you, you, you seem like this sort of, like on the surface, you had such a very calm, like almost very laissez-faire demeanor, like no resentment, no, no. you know. The, the, you, nev you never felt, what do you think of the U.S. government in general? The U.S. government? Uh, it's in transition now. I think what's happening now is the greatest thing in the world. Trump, I really do, because... Uh, I know yeah. you're not a fan, but you, but you're no, no, I'm I'm a fan of 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 the whole. There again, it's ordained. Yeah, you see, he never expected to win. I'm sure not. Right? Yeah. No, he, he's he's a hustler. Yeah. He, he just wanted the money. <laughs> he just wanted the money in the stage time. That's all. He just likes he he just likes doing see, I his think act. A, I think he's a patriot, but he just likes but, doing his act. Yeah, deep down, I don't think he thought he was going to win though. But of but, course not. Yeah, he never wanted to win the first time. Yeah. And the only reason he won, the, the, no, this is my. Your opinion. own thing. Yeah. The only reason he won was because the FBI wanted to get him, yeah, it, it, do, you know, put him away as a gangster because they've known forever that he's he's dirty as as can be. Trump is Trump, yeah. Because when when he started attacking Obama, you know that the CIA, FBI, and everybody else went right after his ass, and so they got his taxes, they got everything. Obama way back then, but. You mean because uh, of the whole birth thing when you're saying he wasn't born in the United yeah, States? Yeah, yeah. As soon as you start doing that to a president, right. the whole force of the United States government goes and, and checks us th this guy out. Right. And so they checked him out. And that's still dossier, by the way. <clears throat> that, that, Trump's right. It's just the, just the FBI that, yeah, they that, created, got, right. that got it. They oh, it's created. no doubt that they were after him. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So you link, it to the, you link it more to the whole birth thing than the Hill. Uh, uh, than it was because of that that started the Yeah, yeah of course. And so, wow! It's an when, and, then, and then they're also they're also going after, yeah. See, to and, me, and I, the FBI knows about him. Yeah. The CIA knows about. Everybody knows about Trump, and they knows about. And by the way, America's got more spies in Russia mm. than Russia has in America. That that ball, right? Exactly. It's a joke. They, they, they know exactly up. what well, what well, Putin's thinking, well, thinking, doing, and every. And so they know the whole Trump thing was yeah. going on. What Trump thing though? Yeah, well, the Trump and in Russia and and all the. <laughs> I mean, you know, so you think he did collude the with money, Russia. the money. Where did Trump get his money from? Where well, does originally from his dad, and then he made money in real estate, and then, then made money as a celebrity. But then he borrowed money from Russia, Putin. Do you know that for sure? Well, he's been laundering money in his. All the Russians own his condos. <laughs> Come on, is it very, the Russians is, is bought it very, his. Well, the Russians own condos all over the place. It's because they're trying to get their money out of Russia. They're, right? They are getting their money right. out of Russia. But that, but that doesn't mean that he's colluding with Russia in the election. The fact the that the Russians, the Russians want to get their money out of Russia, right? As do Chinese people want to get it out of China. Absolutely. So they buy condos from not just yeah, Trump, absolutely. from everybody. Yeah. Right? So every big developer sells to the Russians, not just okay. Trump. Okay, listen to this. Sure. <laughs> Trump, Trump did not want to win. Putin saw a, a, a thing with Trump. They, this guy can win. Because, again, the Russians, they got a lot of spies there. With lot of, we got spies there, but... They saw, they saw what a lot of people missed was that the, uh, the, the fact that, that Trump 
It's called negative, uh, pl- ne- negative publicity, you know, like trolling people. That, that cell, that creates attention to... Oh, to, the whole internet's the, based on negative, right. Yeah, yeah on yeah. troll, yeah, yeah. Yeah. engagement, so, engagement, yeah. yeah. so it's... it's uh, He's uh, an expert uh, at that, by the way. Yeah, the, yeah that's yeah. what oh, I'm he's, saying. Oh, he's great. That's what I'm saying. So Trump, and then Russia says, this guy can win. I felt it. I said, this guy could win. And I thought it would be a good thing for if you'd won, simply because I, he, I thought he was a builder, and I thought he was going to do the infrastructure and make a shitload of money, mm-hmm. more money than he could ever think right. of, stealing. <laughs> you know, he's, he could just, you know, he, he's got the infrastructure thing, and he's got the cred. He's right. got everything. He could have, but he's a destroyer. Mm. He doesn't know how to build. He just knows how to destroy mm. So how much and cheat? Okay, I guess that, and that's that's your opinion, right? So you know, I don't share that opinion. Of course. Okay, and I and I, but I love the fact that we could talk about it. Uh-huh. Okay, on on the other side of the equation, though, right? I look at the reason he won having more to do with the fact that Hillary stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders, and that put a flawed candidate up in the. Now, to me, if Bernie, I believe Bernie Sanders would have beaten him in the election, and what happened was because she controlled the DNC. Okay, he should have been the nominee rightfully, oh, for sure. but it got stolen from what you had. So you had an artificially propped up candidate. Yeah, no, you're absolutely and I mean, right. And I'm that's an artificially propping up things like stocks in the past. And yeah. typically, whatever's artificially propped up yeah. will always fall. Yeah. So to me, that was, in my, that's my opinion. I, I, I believe that, and that would have, I think it would have been a terrible thing if Bernie Sanders won, because I think it's, it, I don't believe in those, in the economics. So I, I, I believe in, and I'm a libertarian at heart, yeah. that's what I am, yeah. but I believe in that in, in economics of more of the Trumpian than Hillary, or especially yeah. Bernie. Yeah. And I think you did too, and that's why you thought yeah. there'd be hope for it, right? Yeah. I think what bothers you is the social side of the equation. No, think- no it, well, you know what bothers me with Trump, of course, the minute he started attacking Mexicans, mm. you know, when he, when he went on that, that rant, then I saw that he's, uh, uh, you know, appealing to the... Uh, to the radical, the Nazis, you know, and I saw that, and and and, and, it, and the thing is, I see my my theory is that he was trying his best to lose, because he did not want a job. Hustlers don't want jobs, man. They don't want to be told what to do. That's why he's not. That's why the government, you know, is all screwed hmm. up the way it is now. And so, this is my theory again. Sure. Is, is yeah. that he? He tried his best to lose, and the more he tried, the more real he got, and the more real that everybody goes, oh, I like this guy. Right. Because he, you know, he he's, speaks he's the, honest. He's honest, right. He, he, you feel it. You feel it. You see it. He's honest. And you'd rather listen to him than Hillary. See, I think he won the open mic contest. You're right. See, you're, see. No, you're, 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 it's funny that, you know, it's really interesting that you and I could have so many of the same <laughs> perceptions yet come to a different conclusion, which is really yeah. amazing. <laughs> Right, and, and and here's the thing: you know me. I am the least prejudiced guy in the fucking as much yeah, as you. Yeah. I I don't care what anyone does, who they are. I hate stupid well, people heard, and I hate idiots. I, hate, I heard a rumor you're Jewish. Well, yeah, well, so, yeah, yeah. There you go. Exactly, that's a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you know, and I and I married a girl who's you know Christian, right? You know, and, um, <laughs> so, or something. I don't even know. I get confused with all the all the like this Catholic Christian. You know, you know she's like a wasp in my mind because she comes from a really <laughs> formal family and stuff, right? And you know, she's amazing, right? But the interesting thing is, is that. I see. I look at the Mexican thing, right? Now, I'm going to Mexico to do another speech. I love it down there, right? Sure. And I, my takeaway from what he said was very different. See, like, and and my it says my perception was that he does not dislike people from Mexico. What he dislikes is illegal immigration. He's just sometimes not that great at explaining himself. See, I think his fatal flaw, Trump, it, 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 is communication. He's like almost like the unfunny comic. He says, anyone else could say something and they'll be like, yeah, whatever. He says like, rah, the people freak out. Some of it is the press trying to, they love to, negativity sells more than positivity, right? That's what I'm saying. And, and, yeah, and, so, and they, so, they, so, so so that's part of it. But I had a very different takeaway with that, okay? Because I, I thought it was really more about, and he did say something I thought was fucking stupid. And I'll, and I'll also admit, and I agree with you, that I was thinking that, is this guy trying to blow the... Like, I thought... I, my wife's like, no, no, no. He knows what he's doing. I'm like, no way. This guy's just saying stupid shit. There was a time I was... I said, no. He can't really want to win and be saying this shit. I'm saying. No, I'm, I agree. Yeah. But, you know, but I never... In my mind... See, my, I guess my core... I had two core beliefs. One, I believed deep down he was a patriot. That's my, my, was my belief, right? Yeah. And I also was so nervous about the economy 
That that was my highest value. Like I just someone's got to do something about the economy, and I just could not take more of the same. And I rep, Hillary represented more of the same. So so for me, that was like these overlying. And I also think that I think that presidents don't have as much impact as we think. Like I always say with the Supreme Court, it doesn't matter who he puts on the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court will self-correct, like it's doing right now. All of a sudden, the conservatives are voting liberal. They, that's too smart, the Supreme Court. They're not going to allow themselves to, to become so out of they, They're there to stabilize the country. So I, I don't care how many conservative justices he puts on there. Yeah. They'll flip to liberals. Absolutely. Because it's happened. So I get, but it's, it, what really amazes me is, A, you have, you have no animosity or toxicity towards your opinion. It's just your opinion. It's, I think it's awesome, by the way. And how we share a lot of the same opinions, but come to a different conclusion. What do you think that's about? Well, well, here, here, here's the thing. Because we're both with, rational, small people. Well, here, here's the thing with Trump. He, like you say, in his heart, you know, and another theory I, I have is that he's had way too many blowjobs. Is that a bad thing? Yeah. Why? Sucks it the common cup. Well, <laughs> well look, 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 look at all the people that it's brought down. Bill O'Reilly. Uh, uh, all those uh, oh, that's a, Harvey we Weinstein. Have, we, we need to have this conversation. Harvey Weinstein, uh, Bill Cosby. Uh, yeah, and what happened? What do you think of Bill Cosby? Do you think? Okay, wait, I want to hear thing. this from you because you've been around a lot longer. Okay, Co- Tell me Co- the fucking truth. You're in, on the inside. Co- how many years? Now? fifty fucking years. Cosby, Cosby. Uh, framed or not framed? Right now, right now, he's as happy as he can as he's ever been because he's with his people. He's entertaining. He's back being Bill, funny Bill. Back being real Bill. See, really? what happens when you get money, you get power. And when you get power, you get this absolute power corrupts, absolutely. No doubt and about so, it. And so, so when you need a blowjob, you don't have, you can buy one anywhere you want, but it's more fun and more thrilling to fuck someone that, that's not expecting it, doesn't want it, do it, everything. So, so it's like shoplifting. You don't need that shit, but you steal <laughs> it just for the th- thrill. I like that. You see, so that's the same thing with these guys. When they get too much money, they get too much power, and then the only see we're only here to recreate our, another person. That's why primal the, drive is so strong. That's why we have our dicks. That's why the women have their pussies, and that's why there's that attraction. And and the other thing I think with Trump too is that he, when he's nasty to women, there's a certain woman that likes that. No doubt. They like that. Because I've, I've seen people get divorced because the guy was too boring, right. too nice. And I've seen people that get apart from each other. They love each They hate each other in the beginning, maybe in the end. But it's that, it's that uh, uh, what do you call it, that action, you know, the conflict. Conflict is exciting, and it, and it's, and it turns you on. Like makeup sex. Nothing turns anybody on better than makeup There's sex. There's nothing better. In the, for all you real young people, really, <laughs> this is the best. It's, it's really interesting that, that why it's like just the greatest thing in the world. The smell. It's just everything has like this right heightened. Everything. Everything. It's the nicest feeling in the world. And that was, that's what drives us. And when you get powerful, like, 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 and you're powerful and rich, what do you need a, a new car? That doesn't. That's not exciting. A uh, new house, a new yacht. Uh, it's all bullshit. Pussy. Mm. You will. <laughs> I, you I, will. I, I understand. You will. I understand. You will <laughs> go but to the distance. You'll do true. anything for question, the pussy. Question though, right? Question. You are married to an amazingly beautiful woman. Yes. Who I know, right? Yes. Um, who, Who's in the show, by the who, way? Right. Who is in your show? Is also aged incredibly, like amazing, right? Yeah. Um, See, so do you think, no, but my point is, do you, do, but do you try, have you been faithful? Faithful. Faithful. No. Okay, because uh, uh, I have been faithful to my last end. Yeah. I was well, big, no, now, now. Now you now, are. Now, so now, I, so now, yeah. my point is, can, like, I was the biggest cheat in the fucking world. Yeah. It wasn't you, by the way. I, <laughs> it was your dick. <laughs> it was my dick, was, exactly. And he really <laughs> fucking was out there. Because <laughs> your brain, and he, your and, brain and I, can't keep up with it. And the more cocaine I did, the more <laughs> disgusting he would get. You and know? the more harder it was to get he, off. And, yeah. And this is before Viagra, by the way, which yeah. kind of was a great equalizer for this <laughs> stuff, right? But now, I see, I have, I have somehow evolved as a, as a person because I'm older now, but I would never ever cheat on my wife now, ever. No, I would no never consider to. it. No one could tempt me. But so, is it possible that we evolve? Like, you know, so you're saying, yeah, so totally, you do evolve, right? Totally, totally, totally. Yeah, you become celibate. So this, I, I, or what, I, monogamous, let's say. I went 13 years because of uh, prostate cancer. Right. 
uh, 13 years. It was just the last uh, year that I I woke the sleeping giant up. And, and how I, is the sleeping giant? He's better. mean as a snake. He's better. He needs he needs a lot of rest <laughs> <laughs> in, in between sessions. How old are you now, by the way? I'm 81. 81. But it surprised the hell out of my wife. You know, we, we were in in, in a in, good way. In, yeah, in a, we were in Buenos Aires tango, and I couldn't tango, you know, as good as her, and so I was a cameraman. But as a cameraman, I saw how sexy this woman is. And I had a whole two days of filming her dance. And the sexier she got, the hornier I got. Next thing I know, um, I, I, I got some massage oil, and, and we had a nice night. And it, was, it surprised her. First time in 13 years. That's so. awesome. You that know, my dad, my dad has prosket, has slow... You know, That's what I had. Yeah, I know. And um, now he's really, he's 88. You met my dad in yeah. jail, right? And um, it was a pr- prison, right? It was like prison. <laughs> but, um, and matter. he loved you. As my, did my mom. They couldn't believe you were the same person because the way you were in the movies, <laughs> they're like, That's Tommy Chong. It's like you're a brilliant guy. You come over to Stone, all right? And, um, and he's, he's having a tough time at now, but he's 80. But he, it wasn't because of the prostate cancer. That's not usually what does it. It's, it's just ba- basically just everything else, you know? Yeah, that's what they say. But yeah. I had the same thing, and then I got rectal cancer. So they, uh, they uh, cleaned out the, both areas at the same time. So now I'm cancer-free. Boom. And that's why the big guy... I think the marijuana is good for that too, right? Totally. Well, it's good for, again, it's for the brain. Yeah. It, it calms the brain down. So and the there, brain heals There's no the worries. There's nothing. You're, you're no, no stress. And next thing you know, uh, you know, like I said. Let's go back to, to this whole Bill Cosby, but not just him, but like, what do you think of the whole, like the Me Too? Like, obviously things have changed radically in the last five years. You think it's a good thing, a bad thing? Jordan, I learned one thing. If I learn anything, you know, again, like I said, I, I'm a, on the spiritual path in a lot of ways. You know, studying uh, Emmett Fox is, is a writer, a, re- a writer that you should get into. He explains the Bible in a very, very academic way. And in all the commandments that were given to us, were not given to us in a punitive sense. They were given to us to help our lives. And so the one commandment that I've been trying to to really follow is judge not. And so it freed me. When I quit judging, I, it, you know, I, it, it, was, it just opened everything because I was in a movie called uh, Zootopia. Mm-hmm. I know, yeah. And uh, c- the cartoon, I was the voice of the yak. And, and in the movie, I looked around and there's, Elephants, there's uh, rhinos, there's hippos, there's uh, monkeys, there's little ferrets, there's bunnies. And, and to me, it was like people. There are people are heavy for a reason. They're going through that experience. See, what I look at, life is in uh, school, and you're taking a course in school. And then when you finish that course, you, you transition into the spiritual world, then you come back, and you take another course, and you keep, take another course. And this can go on forever because we are eternal beings. Right. And so to judge anything would be a mistake because they're on their own separate path. Whatever they're doing, be it criminal, be it saint, you know, be it whatever it is, I cannot judge anybody. And I don't judge anybody. Therefore, I'm just free to, to enjoy everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Even me, my time in jail, it turned into, like, like I said, a very positive thing. Even though I got cancer while I was there. Right. Even though I, we lost millions of dollars you know, with the company and that. Right. It didn't matter. Right. It didn't matter because the money came back. The money comes and goes like, like you know. It comes and goes. The one thing that we have is our integrity. That's the only thing we have. And if you have your integrity, then you can look at everything because you got no, no uh, uh, moats in your eye, as it were. You, you can see everything. You use the word eternal being. We're eternal beings. Yes. What does that mean? Tell, tell, tell me what that means to you. Like that. Okay. In the, in the Bible, it says, in the beginning, which there was no beginning. Metaphorical beginning. Yeah, the, the, the beginning has been translated out to being is when we started understanding. Mm. 
See, when we evolve from creatures, and then we come into Sentient this, beings. then we come into this uh, uh, area where we can understand. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning. But forever and eternal is forever. Is, there's never been a beginning. There's never been an end. This universe, for instance, is one of zillions, trillions of other universes. That's why I, got, I was on Joe Rogan, and I did a theory. I had told him my theory of, uh, I think that this is our universe, Earth, and we're the only creatures in this particular universe that have the reasoning power that we have. Hmm. So we wouldn't then not probably stumble on another That's right. intelligent race. That's right. Because they're in an alternative or That's a separate right. universe. That they're a in parallel a, or exactly. parallel universe. Exactly. Exactly, or a parallel, a parallel, a parallel, or wherever. It, so, so that's what eternal, and that's what uh, that's what it means to me, is that we have time to do everything, not just be ourselves in this life, but then be someone else in another life. Well, so, what do you think after right, after death, life after death? What, just explain it to me. It, 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 I'd love to really. I'm not, I just, it's not, if, if we were just having a private conversation, I'd want to know this answer. Like, what do you really? You know, what do you believe happens after death? No, death is just a moment. We go into yeah, it's like uh, it's like uh, our DNA zero and one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we go from one to zero. We go into the spiritual world. By the way, the spiritual world there's no want, no need, no nothing, no desire. There just is love. There's just energy, and love is an energy. Love, love is really awareness. And what if so? There's always a one to a zero, right? So, what would, so if there's love, there's got to be hate, then, right? No, no, only in the physical. Only in physical. And See, so, in the spiritual realm, it's only love. There, there's only love. There's only uh, uh, a spirit. There's, there's nothing. There's no want and desire. See, evil or or want comes from need, a need, a desire. You need food. You need clothing. You need a car. You need that. You need. You need. You need affection. You need a partner. You need them. In the spiritual world, there's just you. There's nothing else. And, of course, you know, there's other spirits. But one thing that we are, we are individuals. See, everything is down to one. You take a, a coconut tree, for instance. Right. Okay, the tree itself isn't the coconut nut. See, it's separate. But it came from that tree. Mm -hmm. And now it became a coconut. Right. And what is a coconut? It's a seed. You plant it, another coconut will grow. Right. But inside that seed is food, water, nutrition. But There's to, all to these things. To, to, so it can germinate. And by the way, coconuts have a special uh, 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 protection, protection. Yeah. from bugs. Mm. Did you know that? Natural insecticide. Yeah, natural yeah, insecticide. A lot of them develop as, over years of evolution, right? Yes. They develop these things yes. to ward off bugs. Yeah. We're a coconut. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we are. So that make my parent at the coconut tree. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah, palm tree. <laughs> yeah. And see, and, and it doesn't matter who your parent is. See, it doesn't matter. That's immaterial. In, in, in real life, you can see that. Sometimes. How do you? So how do you reconcile that? Because you know, how do you reconcile that with the material world today? In the form just to achieve happiness. Words, the goal is to be happy, right? Because I think at the end of the day is to have happiness, right? Well, happiness is real easy. Tell me, because that's one thing is I'm always like, I'm probably happier now than I've ever been, but I've always struggled with that okay. among all things, a peace, it's peace called, and happiness. It's called forgiveness. Forgiveness. That's all you got to do. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself and forgive others around you? Yeah, forgive everybody. Forgive yourself first, though. Forgive, your, forgive yourself for thinking bad thoughts. You know what I'm saying? Forgive so it sounds yourself. a lot like the Catholic religion, but without well, but not having to have a mediator in between, right? <laughs> well, the, <laughs> there again, like I, 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 got a, I got a thing against all religions. As do I. Organized, I, never, I do not believe in organized religion. I, I, it I, corrupts the th great thoughts get corrupted by men well, no, with no, intentions, no, you know? It, what it is, yeah, again, it's, it's, see the word in the Bible, especially with, with Jesus, his word, he says, my word will live forever. Now, a word. What is a word? Just a word. It's a thought. Right. It's a thought. And so the Supplies way he... meanings to experience. The way he thought will live forever. And, it, and it's, it's, it's a thought. It's just like being nice to each other. You know, being for forgiveness. All those, all those great things. It's to build our own self, our own integrity. Because that's what makes you happy. See, 
That's why you, you can see blind people, uh, you know, singers especially, you know, they're, they're, they're in their world. Do you know Stevie Wonder? Yeah. Was Stevie he Wonder. like that? Was he? Stevie started out like that. <laughs> he, he comes and goes, you know, he, he's had a few, say, he drives a car, you know. He has a aide sit beside him. <laughs> scares yeah, I hope so. He scares the <laughs> shit out of everybody. Unless but it's he, like a Tesla that's all driving. It's going to be a fucking rough experience, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. But here's the thing. Peace of mind. See, that's what Jesus, when he left, he says, I get my peace, I give unto you. That's the only thing he left us. His the peace. problem is that that message gets so corrupted and distorted. Again, you're as judging. As soon as people, what's that? You're judging. No, no, I, I'm saying is I believe that the message is very pure into, into the message, but when there's institutions that develop around the message... No, totally. They get, it corrupts the totally, message. Because, totally. it's, no because more, it's a physical world. Yeah, it, 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 it becomes around the message and makes all this other Absolutely. layers of stuff around it. And, you know, and what they're doing, they're learning the wrong way. They're learning the wrong way. Because to me, like religion is pretty obvious. Organi organization is about control. It's using it to control people money. versus to free people it's money. and make money. Because It's, right, money. Of course, it's yeah. all about money yeah. when you go that route. It's all about money. So getting See, back. because Jesus said, you know, he, he didn't want anybody to, to, to preach. He said, spread the word, but not preach. Uh, and only give the word out to those that want to hear. Those that have ears will hear. Those that have eyes will see. But you don't want to. <laughs> see, the best the yoga saying called, Stay on your own towel. Do you do yoga? Yeah. Oh, can I, can I tell you a story work? real quick? I don't want, I know this is about you, not me, but I had a breakthrough. I'm mm -hmm. always in pain, my back. Yeah. yeah. My, I just had a shoulder replacement. I did yoga. I remember. I did hot yoga. Yeah. Two, yeah. Three because, days ago. Yeah. yeah. I woke up the next day. I never slept better and woke up with no pains. Yeah. I was, I'm doing it again this afternoon. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. So you do yoga? Yeah. It's amazing. Once in a while. It's amazing. I do tango dancing mostly. Really? Yeah. Oh, you are dancing with the stars. You were phenomenal, by the way. Hey, that fucked me up. No. <laughs> <laughs> because that was, you slipped I, pull I was back lad. You know, I had, a, I had a real strong lady. You know, she's dancing with me, but she's, she's steering me around. Like, I never learned anything. And then, and then after I, I dan danced with the stars, I couldn't dance tango with my wife. So I'm, I'm, I'm studying tango. Tango's a beautiful mm. dance, man. You should you should get into it. Really? Like, my wife's a great dancer. She's phenomenal. Well, then get into I'm tango. a terrible dancer. I'm not, I'm not terrible. I'm just like, you know, she makes fun of me because she's on like Saturday Night Fever still, you know? They'll do my John Travolta from 1970. Yeah. <laughs> He's great, yeah? But it's a good exercise in in uh, having someone teach you what your body needs to do that's not normal. Mm. It's really, really good. Go, go, go back to Bill Cosby for a second. Okay. Do you do you really think he's happy where he I'm is? I'm totally happy. Really? I've heard. You've heard, heard that? Yeah. I've so you think that. he's glad it ended up this way? Absolutely. I, was, I thought it was really unfair what they did to him. I, that's what I was just, really? I, to, I, I don't know. I just didn't, you know, I didn't believe he was really, I mean, I think, that, listen, you know, as famous as Bill was, how many... I mean, I have a daughter, so I, I get it. Like, I mean, I believe in women's rights. No one should be raped or... or but how many women kind of went into it with Bill Cosby, you think, you know, knowing that, like, you know, Every, they would, would build... Probably everyone. But right? the trouble is with Bill... Cosby. Bill, well, the trouble with Bill, he was a very hypocritical about it, you know, because he, he was he, he was like that spider, you know, getting him into their, his lair, yeah, yeah. you know. And, and my daughter worked for him. He was using quaaludes, too, so I felt yeah. partial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I'm going to get mad at anyone using quaaludes. <laughs> my daughter, Robbie, was a, his assistant on its, um, uh, one of his television shows. And, and she loved Bill, and she just stuck up for him. But then she said that one time he kind of wanted her to come over to this house. And But she's street smart, you know. I guess, like you say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. That's what it so was. So it makes great people That's sometimes. And being cheap didn't help. He was cheap. Cheap. I don't know him. Yeah, he won't. He wouldn't pay the ladies. Oh, shit. Yeah. And, and he cheated them. Like, he, he drugged them and then fucked them. You know, mm -hmm. that's not fair. Do you know that for a fact? I, oh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, oh, I, yeah, 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 he did. How'd you know that? How do you know they did that? I know the daughters. I know the, I, I, you know, we, we, there's, a, there's a sense. Okay. What do you think of uh, Weinstein, having the Weinstein? Oh, yeah. same thing. Weinstein, you know, he, power corrupts. Hey, you want that part in the baby? You want that part in the movie, baby? Come on over here and get on your knees. Come on, get to work. That's what they do. How and he's a, not a very attractive guy. To say the least, and so so when see what what happens when they lose their power, right? That's the, boom. Then they come out of the woodwork. Mm. That's why no hell has no 
Fury as a, a woman scorned. Oh. What happened to this guy? I knew the guy from Warner Brothers. He just got lost his job, right? Kevin, everything. Like that. Some girl came out of nowhere and said, "There's shit going on." He's getting her apart. The guy, the CEO of Warner Brothers, yeah, got tanked. Uh, Les Moonbiz. Him too, right? Les, I know his wife really well, and she's oh, she, the uh, props. See, I, on some level, though, I I, I think there's going to be a, it's a backlash because. In other words, a lot of these, like, they're almost screwing themselves a lot of these. The women, they, if they were, the people, there were some women who were no doubt using sex to advance in Hollywood. They had to be. They were, used, they were playing the game. Some totally, totally. So the real, the biggest victims of all were the ones who had massive talent but refused to sacrifice their ethics and integrity, wouldn't sleep their way, and, and, and lost out yeah. to less talented actresses who yeah. got jobs because they opened their yeah. legs, so to speak, yeah. right? Those are the three. Those are the biggest victims of all. Yeah, but it's a mistake, and mistakes always get corrected. Do you think it's still going on now? In no way. Is is, is the casting? Well, couch? You, oh, you know, you know, it stopped everything. Was uh, the phone, the iPhone? And then as it rings, I love yeah. it. Well, just a minute, I gotta turn. It That's fine. Uh, oh, because everyone's got happened? a phone to take a picture, right? It's very. See, see what happened? The iPhone changed the world, because now you can't lie, without someone going. Well, just a minute. Check it Here's out. the text. Here's the check it out. Yeah, I you know. see, and and that's what brought down these m movie moguls because at one time you could only shoot a movie if you got a uh, cameras and thirty five millimeters and you couldn't and, hide and all a camera that equipment, so easily, right? you, you, all that stuff. We need that, and so these guys that control the purse strings, they were they were at the top of their mm -hmm. thing, you know. Uh, yeah, they got money, but if you want this, you got to do that. Now, see, it's not like that anymore. It just seems like there was like this this. It, it's for some reason, I, I try to wrap my arms around it. It was a, a tipping point where all of a sudden that it's like, the it, you, to me, it's like it was innocent till proven guilty, mm -hmm. and now it's guilty till proven innocent. And there was, mm -hmm. but what, it's like it's almost this hidden hand, like all of a sudden, like even the slightest whiff of impropriety can bring down an incredible, like Steve Wynn. Mm hmm like a, yeah. a super powerful guy. Yeah. yeah. You have to slide, and it's like just, I don't know, it seemed like there was what, no, who is making those decisions? It's the boards of directors, obviously, nature. being fueled by. Well, you see what? Speak. Na nature. Tell me your piece. Na nature makes the decision. You can't. If you're making a mistake, now you know. Like this is what you teach too. You, your 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 thing was all about truth, all about real. Be real. Be real to every whatever you're doing. Right. If you're sitting down, if you're tired, be real. Just and that's what being real is. Sometimes you're not always right. You know, you're, sometimes you're wrong. You're real, but, but wrong. Yeah, yeah. You can say I, I'm wrong. That's why forgiveness is is a very big, big uh, help because you because everybody fucks up. You know, and 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 that's the whole thing. If you realize your mistake, and then like you did, you know, you did. It took you a while, but you understood. You understood the power. You got this incredible power. And it can be used for good or bad. The lazy, or, or if you're not yourself, and the, the minute you do drugs, you're not yourself. Okay, so then you get off on, on, on that other path. But when you're yourself, true to yourself, like mm -hmm. you say, like doing yoga. Right. Yoga is really nothing more, but you're just doing your own body exercises. <laughs> That's all you're doing. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing magical or secret. There's no drink you're going to drink to make you big or anything. It's just you and your brain. And see what happens. What you, when you do exercise like yoga or breathing, see a lot of people, they don't realize that they don't breathe enough. You know. That's what she kept, she kept saying to me. Yeah. You're not breathing. You're not breathing. Yeah. She kept every yeah. like, she you got to breathe, breathe, breathe. I wasn't breathing. That's yeah. energy. Yeah. When you breathe in, that's oxygen. It's like, it hurts too much. I can't fucking breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to breathe yeah. because breathing brings you energy into your body. You're bringing that energy into your body. It's your breath. And, and it calms you down. See? Like I mean, when you're I'm playing embarrassed to do, when I do yoga. I'm, I'm like, it's embarrassing. When I do, it's really, I'm terrible. I'm not flexible. No, but My wife is great. She's like, she balances. I can't balance. That's because you're judging. Don't judge. Don't judge. No one cares. By the way, <laughs> when you're at the yoga studio, you know, it's like dancing. You know, don't feel bad about dancing because no one's looking at you. No one wants to look at a bad dancer. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you're, you're all by yourself, dude. You know? Don't get, don't get this feeling that, that everybody's staring at you because they're not, especially in a yoga studio, man. They're busy trying to do their stuff. You know? Question, do you like the world better as it is now? I mean, this new 
age where, no, like with the sort of the me to the heightened political correctness, or do you like better more the 80s, 90s, before the whole political crap? What do you think is healthier? Which do you enjoy more? Oh, it's, it's the same question when they ask me about weed, you know, what's your favorite strain? And I tell everybody I haven't found it yet. And that's my answer. Is it? Yeah, not, I not only like where I'm at, but I'm looking forward to. I mean, society. And do you think it's like? Would you rather be growing up? If so, you know, you've kind of you can look back now. Perspective. You can't. You look back, and you, the older you get, even for me, I see at my age, I'm 56 now. It's easy for me to look back and with a more calm, less urgent eye, because I'm almost like it's, I'm almost like well, what can I do? It's like it's, you start losing power over things. You, you, the older you. Get, the less power you realize you actually have, right? Yeah, yeah. I can have power of my own direction, but in terms of like, it is what it is sort of thing, right? Why so, did you need power, though? Well, when I was younger, I, my highest value was that. I thought but I But you needed it. power because, to get what you wanted. Hmm. That's what you needed. See, now you get what you wanted. You don't need that power. But my question, though, is like, I think it's a lot, a lot of, you have a lot of like wisdom, when you're older, it's one thing you get totally. is wisdom. Hopefully, as, you, as your totally. body goes, your wisdom <laughs> increases, like a direct relationship, right? So I think it's I look at it as very difficult for younger people right now because they they're facing the next sixty years of their life. They it they, it's a kind of nerve wracking for a guy right now out there. Like if he says the wrong thing or does the right thing, he gets me tooed. Or had had it was what would you if it was you right now? Like you were like in your twenties. First of all, you know, how would you navigate the world as it is? Oh, just with my phone. <laughs> just take up my Become phone. Become a creature of the times? <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Man, I remember Woody Allen was writing scripts on an old typewriter, and he used to take pride in it. You know, he said, yeah, I still write my scripts on an old typewriter. Now, is he still doing that? I doubt it. I doubt it, too. Someone finally said, hey, Woody, here's a computer. <laughs> It's easy. It's the same thing as a typewriter, except it's easier. See, don't get stuck in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the past. There's nothing there. It's gone. It'll never come back. The future is never here. It's always there. You're only in the present. So, and so always be in the present. If you're in the present, you can never be unhappy, no matter what's going on. I remember when, when they were executing Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein was about to be hung, and some guy he heckled him. And Saddam got in the moment. He goes, watch, I'll show you how a man dies. And right then I said, whoa, man, yeah. that's it, being in the moment. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. because he's not worried about, about what he had or where he's going. He's right in the moment saying, watch, I'll show you how a man dies. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we... In order to be happy, you got to just stay in the moment. That's where weed, for me, comes in real handy. My, my, spot, my first sponsor in AA was said, he was saying, yesterday is history, yeah. tomorrow is a mystery, and today is a gift. That's, that's what we right. call it the present. That's right. That was his, that's, that's, oh, saying. the present. Why they I call love it the pre that. It's a gift. We I call it the that. present. See, that's it. That's it. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect, man. What was the... What was the Absolute. See, I don't think you even looked at jail as a low point in your life. No, it was one of the highest points. What was the? What was the in your career? And I, I what, was there a point like your? What was your total bottom in your own career where you felt like, oh, I don't know if I like you know come back from this. I just what the fuck had this happen? What was the low point in you know, my career? You had a long career, right? I mean, you have, you've you've been uber successful. You've been up. You've been down. There was a big moment when. Uh, when Cheech came over to my house and said that uh, he was going to do a movie by himself. In other words, we, we were through. Right. And that was, that, was, that was a defining moment for me because we had a couple of movies planned, you know, a couple of million dollar movies planned. We were coming into the big, big, big money and he walked away. And that was a low moment for a while. Did he tell you his reasons why? Uh, he got an offer. He got, he, you know, he... You guys are still great friends, man. Oh, yeah, no, we're back, work, we're yeah. back working together. Yeah. But, but, but... Was we, that, was a tin cup? That was that, was but it that, that the year? What, what, what year was it? Um, it was before tin cup. It was, uh, what movie? Oh, it was, oh, it was a Cisco kid. 
It was a Cisco kit. And the thing was, he kind of stole it from me because that was the script that I was working on. That's why I got into Tangle. Because mm. we were offered the Cisco kid when I was in France. We were just finishing up the Corsican brothers. But Cheech was very unhappy in the Corsican brothers because he was getting a divorce. And then he... Uh, uh, and he wasn't wasn't happy at all. He wasn't happy with me. wasn't happy with anybody. And then then he just kept that unhappiness. And then he didn't want to do the the the, the Cisco, Cisco kid. kid. Yeah. He didn't want to do the Cisco kid. And and so what he did, he he made a deal to do the Cisco kid with Jimmy Spitz. Mm. And so so he 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 just left me cold. And and that was the lowest point for what year was that? About? Uh, I think it was 88, I believe. Did you guys have a, a blowout and you threw him out? You just were respectful and say, you know, I think you're making a mistake. No, he, he he came up to my house and he, and he kind of yelled it up. You know, he says, I got another movie. He didn't really want to face me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then... I think you could have taken him back then. Then I he think. says, <laughs> I, I, I still want to do Cheech and Chong, but fuck that, you know. So that was the end of us for, for a good 10, almost 20 years. What'd you do? It, what, so how'd you deal with that? I did my own movie, uh, which I never finished. And then I went back on the stage. As soon as I got back on stage, I was okay. Because I'd never done stand-up alone. And so, see, it, it turned into a good thing. And, and then I got back on stage doing stand-up alone. And then I started, I, I, I missed my wife so much that I... I begged her to come on the road with me and then I told her I put her in the show and then she 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 couldn't refuse <laughs> so so next thing you know we got a Chong and Chong act going and to this day we're still together because of that you know that's awesome yeah yeah so it's basically that so that was the impetus for you and your wife working together that's, and that's how it better. worked out that's all the good stuff came out of it you know how did Chong come back how did Dutch uh, Cheech come back into your life how did that my son well Cheech was in a lull. He wasn't, there wasn't anything coming his way. And then we were getting offers to get back together again. And, and so my son set up a meeting for Cheech and I. And so I went over and we met. And then we had a tremendous argument. But About what? About what happened? Like still rehashing uh, the past? Yeah, it was kind of like you control. <laughs> like, like who did what, you know. And, and he, he just, he didn't want to be a, uh, this is my opinion. He didn't want to be a, the Chicano, the cute Chicano anymore. He wanted to evolve into a serious actor like Jimmy Spitz and, and those guys. I, that's my opinion. And then he, uh, but anyway, he, he needed Cheech and Chong, so we had the argument. But then I, I wrote him an email. And I said, it was nice seeing you together, you know, nice seeing you today, you know. And uh, it was we, we we were so tight, and then you know we got back together again, and so my son inter intercepted my email, <laughs> and then he he added, and I'm really looking forward to working with you again, <laughs> and, and we should get together for a, a rehearsal, and that's great, and and then he sent the email, and then uh, next thing you know, my son says, oh by the way, I changed your email, and, and Cheech is coming over for rehearsal. Because he knew that I, I, I could never... Deep down, you probably wanted to, right? Yeah. Just, uh, and so we had this kind of rehearsal, and then we went back on stage at La Jolla, and we've been together ever since. That was in 08, I believe. You know what's interesting? You said he wanted to be more serious, right? You know, I have this theory about, about all people. We always want to be what we're not. It's like with me, I'm known as a sales trainer, and I'm like, but I also could teach entrepreneurship, and I was always trying to go out and be an entrepreneurship trainer, but as soon as I said, you know, all right, they want me to be this, as soon as I became congruent, you do so much better. Yeah. Instead of trying to buck, you know, the, the universe tells you almost like what you're supposed yeah. to be in some level, right? But why, well, do that, why do we always want to break outside, like be known as something else? What do you think The that's grass about? is greener on the other side. Simple as that? Yeah. And that's why, that's why men cheat, you know? It's, it's a newness. The rug is you, always you miss the on, the other, on the other side. <laughs> yeah, you miss yeah you miss the newness of it all, and then then it's it's an it's a whole thing you know like your manhood you know am I still as groovy as I I've always been you know and and then but the truth is like with me when I when I really fell in love with my wife which I found I've been in love with her ever since I saw her uh, because she's so brilliant. 
and 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 her brilliance keeps me totally alive. You know, I mean, everything I am hmm. t- today is it's really because of her. I met her. She I, was. That's how I feel about mine. My, she my was family. 16 years old when I met her, and she was so wise then. Like I had an old junk car that I had. You know, back in the day, I'd buy a car for a hundred bucks, drive the shit out of it, and then just leave it somewhere. You know. And so I was driving her home one time, and and I, I showed her the, the old car. She goes, well, what's it doing there? I said, ah, you know, she's, don't you want it? I said, no. She goes, well, can I have it? I said, sure. And so when she went back, or when she got someone to go back to get it, it would have been towed away. But that told me right then, you know, she, she sees the value of everything. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good quality, though, yeah? Well, it's, for, for us, it's the best. I wouldn't have nothing if it wasn't for her. So let me ask you a question. So, um, And I will edit this out of the podcast. I will not publish this, just so you know. So if you want to just edit, I'm, I'm going to ask you the question what? about that dinner we had that ended up as a terrible experience. Oh, uh, so no, you, no, there's no problem. Okay, because I, I would never do it without. I would, I'm not like that. So, But I, I wanted to talk about that. Sure. Because, uh, you know, I felt bad about it just because I, I love you. Yeah. Um, but it was about over Donald Trump. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And your wife, yeah. she made a comment. And yeah. I'm sure she probably wished she could take it back. Yeah. And maybe she didn't mean it as it came out. But, yeah. like, if you, if you vote, I can never be your friend. I can't be with you. And I was, like, kind of knocked back <laughs> by that. And you, you didn't even hear it. You were talking. You were completely fucking oblivious. <laughs> And I think you know. I don't know if she was drinking or not. It doesn't matter. The point was, I think she's a sweet lady. And and, that, and um, what was that about, though? Well, she's very. She's so anti-Trump because all the women that he, and she's entitled to be that way. Yeah, she's totally. she, all, all the people that women she raised. Well, you should have saw what I, the the flack I got when I when I told her that you know he could win. And it was like, are you kidding? Are you, blah, 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 you know, but I kept, <laughs> I kept saying, hey, listen, you know, I, you didn't I, vote I, for him I, behind the students like, secretly vote for him, did you? Not? Actually, <laughs> I, actually, I no, I, I, I do you think, think about I, it? I think I voted for Hillary, it was an absentee ballot, anyway. okay, but uh. But no, I, I thought for sure. You know, I just had that feeling like a lot of people had. No, this guy. You saw, you start, it started to get really real. I for wanted all. to see more of them. Mm. That's what it is. And to this was, day, to this he was day, telling I, the fucking truth. Hey, well, you can hate his truth or like his truth, it, it, but no, you can hate what he's saying, but he, like, it was a fresh way of speaking yes, as a politician, right? Yes, yes. Well, you well, never knew what would come out of his mouth. Well, what, what it is, I'm also watching the guy destroy himself because he can't help but tell the truth. <laughs> And the way he tells the truth is that he he's accuses, the unfunny comic. I he accuses everybody of the shit that he's doing. <laughs> I think that's a, a, a unat politician's game, though. Yeah, like Hillary. No, it's, it, it's new. It's all politics. You see, they're trying it now. It's unbelievable. They all. Yeah, they're it. all jumping on the Trump wagon. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you a question. But, but what? So you think what was that about? Just her? Just an overreaction at the moment to, like, because obviously she doesn't mean she can't be my friend because I voted or something. Right? No, her, her, and uh, uh, Lynette. And, the and, girl, yeah, Lynette. That, yeah. That, that set it up. They they were both very anti-Trump, right? And and so when your girl, as is my daughter, who I love to death, yeah. And when your girl said said uh, you know that she likes Trump, and then oh, then they they just attacked her as women do, you know, women. <laughs> well, it's a woman thing. You know? But in terms of like being not being able to be friends with someone because they voted a certain way, do you believe that's a no? That's just not. That's probably just again, open. you yeah. know, again, who gives a shit, you know? Because in like, the long run, who I cares, en- you know? I enjoy. Debating with people, not even, but just talking who don't share my exact views. Because the amazing thing is, is that we agree on so much about something, but come to a different conclusion. That's yeah. the fucking amazing part. Well, it, well, it's everybody, and that that shows their individuality. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. You know. Absolutely. Who do you think is going to win in 2020? You have a good, you get a feeling. I want to know because I'm, you know, my uh, feeling. Yeah. I, you know, I really don't know. I, I, I like a lot of. Uh, who do you think? Who do you think people. is going to win the Democratic nomination? First of all, you think Biden takes it or no? I think he blows up. I, no, I think Biden's uh, take it because Biden did something very smart. He he appealed to the Trump voters. Mm. That's what he did this last thing. He said, "I'm I'm not getting caught up in the liberal because I like I can work with anybody. I don't." And, and the way he said it was very yeah, cool. Yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't call me boy. Yeah. In, in other words, Biden says, "Listen, I'm a white guy." 
<laughs> they didn't call me boy. I got along good with On him. On some level, it's like that same thing that with Trump. Like you think he's, how could this guy say it? But like, you're like, what, what's he going to say next almost? Yeah. And that creates engagement. Like you want to hear Biden. In, everybody, it's, years pop up. He says the outlet. Uh, yeah. It's, and Biden's going for it. Because you just don't want to say things that are, like you say, politically correct. You, It's like any act or anything else. You want, you want that conflict. You know, it's a really interesting point because like the press is playing into these big gaps but you're saying they're not yeah. actually gaps yeah. do you it's, think it's planned on his part or just planned. being fucking authentic he's planned. fuck it i'll say what the fuck that's why i always thought trump had a had a uh, had an ulterior motive <laughs> because i thought he he's brilliant because he's getting in now once he gets in he'll go for infrastructure of course he is a builder and then what well i think that i think that was because and that's not just, I think, the, the, I think politics is so sad. The Democrats and Republicans really just refuse to work together. No matter who's in, it's like they always, if Trump says A, they say B, and it's not no better the other way around. When the Democrats are in power, the Republicans, they attacked Obama. They impeached Bill Clinton, who I loved, by the way. I fucking loved Bill. I don't care who he slept with or fucked or got blown. I was like, Mr. President, you could have done a little better, but just you might, you know, because he had this way about him, Bill. Like he was a patriot. See, that's uh, too many blowjobs here. <laughs> <laughs> on steroids. <laughs> yeah. Well, you figure it out, <laughs> man. But Bill is the best. No, Bill, I met Bill, by I the way. I love Bill. I met Bill, and he doesn't know who Cheech and John, or he does know who Cheech Oh, I bet he didn't inhale, Cause, though. Cause he I, didn't inhale, though, when he watched your movie. I, yeah. I, I, uh, I took a picture with him, and that picture disappeared. I don't know where it is, you know. So I, I got I to gotta think about Clinton. I'm not sure. No, I, I like, you know, all the politicians, man. I, I, if you study them, you got to study them. And, 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 and it just cracks me up with Trump because, see, here's the thing with Trump. There's only really one true religion on the planet. And you know what that religion is? Golf. <laughs> Everybody on the planet plays it to the same rules. Mm. And golf is predicated on the fact that you keep your own score. However, there are people that are watching to make sure you're honest, like you're playing in tournaments for money. But golf is the only game that you just play with yourself. You play. People say you go and, golf is and, life, and, man. And, and 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 you go within, and all the good pros that are doing it, you know, they got they fought that battle, they won that battle, they know how to do how to keep calm and all that stuff. It's the only true religion, really, truly religion, religious experience that you can have, which is why. Do you play? Oh yeah. Are you good? Ah, uh, at times. What's your what's the lowest score you ever? No idea. I never. You know, I score. never keep score. I keep. You know what I do? I keep a score of the good shots, which is the best. I and I am all for that. By the way. Yeah, I say I shot a five today. I shot a three. I shot a one. Everybody gets impressed. <laughs> but I've I've helped other golfers because there's a zen of golf. Uh, if you take seven breaths before each shot, you will play much better. And I told this uh, tennis pro, he was having a hard time, and I told him what to do. And I saw him halfway through the tournament. He goes, oh, man, I'm, I'm below par. I'm doing great. Thank you very much. And then I realized I wasn't listening to my own advice. <laughs> <Classic>. <laughs> so I had to take my own advice. But no, golf is a true, the, the true religion. And, and, it, and it's funny that Trump, he's an avid golfer, but he's an avid cheater. He cheats at golf, man. Oh, does he? Oh, big time. I, I've got... I don't I, know. I mean, I, No, I, I've got personal friends really? that, that, that play with him in that. One of his tricks, he'll trap the ball with his foot in his club and bring it, walk it closer to the hole. Sounds like Goldfinger <laughs> from, uh, from James Bond. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah like he'll that. do that. Maybe they watch that. <laughs> he'll do that. He's got uh, uh, caddies in the bushes that when he hits at a bound, they throw the ball into the, into the fairway. There you go. That's Goldfinger. Oh, yeah. and, and it's all about cheating. But, it, but you know, yeah, 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 yeah. who knows, man? Who, who do you knows? think is the most dishonest president ever? That in all recent memory that, that you can, you know. Probably Reagan. Reagan? Yeah, really? Probably Reagan. Most honest president ever. 
Uh, Jimmy Carter. I agree to fucking oh, agree. Jimmy Carter for yeah, sure. Yeah, Jimmy Carter. Right? He's still banging he houses. Was, he's still making houses. He was a hell of a good what, guy. What, he's 90? You know what? He's up there in helping some, the homeless. In some way, he just, you know, he inherited a lot of the problems. With the, I don't really blame him for the economy, the way it happened. It was just a, a lot of, you know, what happens a lot in the presidency is from before and after. It doesn't oh, yeah. really, it's not, no, so, uh, it's big, not so simple. But he was a hell of a guy, Jimmy Carter. Big money took him out. Yeah, he big was a money. really, he Big was money a, and Reagan took him out. Yeah. yeah they, I was they took him out. a little bit too young back then to really know the politics. I was mm. And but uh, and you see where Pot always has a, a role to play with the most honest Willie Nelson and, and Jimmy got high on the uh, the roof of the White House when he won. Yeah, there's always Pot in there. Question: So for everyone who's watching, right? If there's one pe- if one something you've created a film, either film, book. What's the one thing? So first film. What should they watch of yours? I want to introduce. So you guys, you don't know what you're missing with these movies if you haven't seen. But what's the one first thing they should watch of yours that would give them the best understanding of the whole Cheech and Chong phenomenon? What's the one thing they should watch? I'm probably Up in Smoke. Uh, that's what I would think, right? Yeah, Up in Smoke is a classic. I was uh, had a meeting last night with um, John Peters' ex-wife, Christine. Christina. I know her. Christina she lives in the Beverly Hills, right? Yeah, yeah. I played. She has a tennis court now. Yeah, I played at that on the tennis court. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she, she was talking about Up in Smoke last night, and and she was. It's a great. A it's a great time. movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it touched on so many. It, yeah. It touched on so many 70, areas. When was it? Yeah. Did it come out? I mean, when? Yeah, seven in the seven. Seventy-eight. I mean, just back then it was so radical. I mean, right? It was like just unbelievable for me. It was like just, just think just, of what was going on. I know. Back there. Crazy. I mean, there were riots. They were. Oh, all sorts of you know. Every city in America was burning. It was it was crazy. People were being assassinated left and right. Martin Luther King, Robert nuts. Jr., Robert Kennedy Jr., uh, Robert Kennedy, uh, Jack Kennedy. All the assassinations that were going on. All I was you know crazy. I was just a kid. I, I yeah. missed that. I remember my parents crying when Kennedy was Kennedy was, was the, uh, no the, his brother Rod. I was born in 62 so he, so I, I don't remember anything but 63 like, yeah yeah that was the year after so but I remember the whole like later on when, when his brother I remember that vaguely my parents my mother crying and the whole thing was when know, Bobby got killed yeah Bobby yeah yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a crazy time that, and, and you look at that era man I mean it was full of all sorts of crap and the war was going on how much does it piss you off they don't declassify everything like why what's the fucking secret why won't they release all the files don't you think right that i mean there's got to be something about like just just declassify everything from that especially era. when no one would read them anyway <laughs> you know <laughs> some some fucking nerd somewhere <laughs> would read them you know what I'm some saying? msnbc yeah. journalist would i read the whole <laughs> thing i read the Mueller report yeah What's your What's the one book of yours that you think people should read first of all the book, things you've written? What, what's the best insight into who you are and what that, that could help someone else? Probably the I Chong is, is probably the easiest one. Favorite all time movie? Badlands. Badlands. Have you seen it? No. Which one with Martin Sheen? Martin Sheen. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. That's my yeah, that's great. Time, yeah, all time favorite yeah. movie. I was thinking about the, the TV show called Into the Badlands. I've been I used to watch was. Fabulous. Is that the good one? It's off. The, it's no, tell me, do you watch Billions? I, I, I watched the first two seasons. And honestly, oh. listen, listen. It hit so close to fucking. I, I, I couldn't watch it. <laughs> I had to fucking stop because I got annoyed. They're chasing him. His wife's running with the money. I'm like, I, it's like not even fucking fiction. I'm like, stop it. And do you know that the guys who they were going to write the movie, The Wolf of Wall Street, those guys, I met with them. So Koppelman's kid, Charlie Koppelman's yeah, kid is involved yeah. with that, right? And I very early on, before Terry Winter, who wrote the, adapted this the book into a school, I met with the kids. Yeah. It was um, Cotman. I've got his partner's writing partner's name, and we would do something. It didn't happen. Um, but then when I saw Billions, I was like, and I it's, I fucking love what's his name, uh, the Damien uh, is Damien Lewis the actor who plays the, the main guy. Who, yeah, is that his uh, name? Anyway. So good. It's really good. Great show. But I honestly, I got ulcers from that fucking show. I couldn't take it anymore. Like yeah. him being chased by the one guy. That was like my agent Coleman. I'm like, just fucking stop. <laughs> and every time it's on, I'm like, should I? I'm like, no, I can't. I can't. It's too much of an emotional role. <laughs> yeah. Every, like, every, watch every, it. Every, uh, it's my favorite show. My wife sleeps through it all the time, but I, I watch it. What do you think of The Wolf of Wall Street? Oh, what did I think the of The movie. It? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God! It was such a flashback. But I'll tell you, your stories 
the movie touched on him a little bit, but but your stories were. <laughs> but we had time together to shoot. Oh, you, you, I mean the helicopters and the rescues and all that. We never had that in the movie, but oh man, no. Tell me about the Malaysian thing. What happened? The greatest irony. So there's a. Uh, by the way, you can. There's a, a documentary out called Kleptocrats. Uh-huh. K L E P T O Kleptocrats C R A T S about the whole thing. It's a step. I mean. Listen, Leo had no idea, but Leo met these guys, these, these wild Malaysians who were spending money all over and, and they, Vegas. They, fi- they financed the film. They financed the film. They financed the film. Because of Leo. Leo convinced them to finance the film. Not you. No, I didn't know them. No, no, know. no. I met them afterwards after Leo brought them to the table. As, when I met them, all right, I knew something. I sensed something with Leo. Would have no, Leo would have no idea because Leo's just a, you know, yeah. he's a... Leo's such an honest guy. Yeah, yeah. But to me, I... Yeah, you, you smelled it out right away. I, well, they spent an awful lot of money on the launch party. Yeah. In other words, the movie has, wasn't even out yet. Yeah. Had, there wasn't a word written of the script. But yet. they launched it. They launched it for like with Kanye West. I was like, what the fuck? And Khan. I was like, oh, I st- I turned, I'm like, whoa, boy. I mean, this is not going to end well. But listen, you know, they made a great movie. And I think some of the... I don't... I, it's interesting, like... I know what happened to this guy, Jolo, was a fucking man. He just stole the fucking money, right? Mm. Um, but the guy who was actually running, the, this guy, just Joey something, was running. I think he thought, I don't know if he really knew what, where the money came from. Like, the guy who was running the studio? Yeah. He was just fucking thought, he was like, well, look what I stepped into. And he was trying to make, he was really trying to make a good movie. So yeah. it was interesting. But Leo had no idea. And then I'm sure Leo was, oh, fuck. I was like, but the irony that the people who financed the Wolf of Wall Street were laundering money. And now, basically, either on the run or in jail. So go fucking figure. I got pictures of, uh, of uh, those guys with Trump. Oh, really? On the golf course. Ah, I because bet. the the golf caddy, you know, Eric Larson. Of course. Okay, he he he, he was with us in jail. Yeah, he uh, sent me a picture of uh, Trump with the Malaysians because Malaysians they t- they took Eric to Malaysia and. Wine and dined him everything, oh and because they wanted, uh, because they knew Eric knew Trump, and they wanted to get a picture with Trump a golf date. So Eric fixed it up. He got a picture. Of, I hope he got uh, at least like five million for that because dude, this guy Jolo would give you. He was like poor, do a champagne bath on Paris Hilton for seven million for shits and giggles. The guy was out of his fucking mind, you know. Well, it wasn't his money. Wasn't his money, and, that, and, and the reason I knew that it was stolen money is because. You know, it was like, who would spend money like that? It's almost like, I know that thing when you don't really earn the money and you really know you work for it, right? It's, there's a, a compulsion almost to spend. Like now I would like, you know, not that I'm concerned, I'm still very loose with money because my nature, but it, it just like, the va- it has value to me. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I worked too hard. You worked hard And there's for too it, many yeah. people involved in making it that you have to respect it, you know? Yeah. So money's a weird, what, what's your take on money? Is it you're a spiritual guy? How do you reconcile living in the material world? Well, you have a beautiful, I've been to your home, you have a beautiful home on the hill. Mm-hmm. You're a very wealthy guy. Mm-hmm. How do you reconcile that with the spirituality? Uh, my wife keeps me honest. You know, she, I, Actually, I don't really have any kind of uh, authority to, to spend anything. I, sh- I shop, We're the same, by my, it's me too. I shop in, in thrift stores. Because you can buy, first of all, you got shit that I remember that used to be really expensive and I couldn't afford. And if you buy it and you don't want it, you take it back and give it back to the thrift store. Uh, so it's a, it's a easy thing, and especially when you're stoned, you, you'll buy shit you'll never use in a lifetime. <laughs> and then with a thrift store, you can always take it back. <laughs> <laughs> or 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 keep it in your house and, and it'll do nothing, you know. No, I, I I'm I'm I never was good with money. I turned down I turned down Me neither, just so you I, know. Me neither. I turned down the Lion King. <laughs> I was supposed to be in the Lion King. Which voice? But but, but uh one of the hyenas. But <laughs> but when but, but when um Disney offered us, but Disney was so anti-drug, and then they offered us offered a, the, us that movie, and Cheech took it right away. But I said, "Nah, I had my integrity," so I turned that one down. But then I, when they did Zootopia, I well because you had that much integrity. Yeah, then. yeah. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, line all of a sudden, I'm 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 on board. <laughs> no, I I no. The thing is, you know what I learned with money is, if you're doing the right thing, that money will appear. And part of the part of the thing, it's like planting anything. If you give that money away to the right people, that money will come back so much that that 
you know, that you, you can't spend it all, and you can't really give it all away. Like, like Gates and all those guys, you know, they got so much money. If they gave millions of dollars the away every day, it's quicker than they could spend. It, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I'm saying. But, but in order to get get to that position, you have to have a, uh, you know, you got to have integrity if nothing else, you know, because money is like anything else. If it's a tool, and if you don't know how to use a tool, that tool will rust. It'll disappear. But if you know how to use it, then then it can be used for all sorts of good things, you know. I asked you what was the lowest point. What the, what was the highest point in your whole career? Let's end on the positive, the best moment you'd say professionally, like when you really felt, you know. I guess the highest point was when we opened for the Stones in L.A. Uh, at the Forum. Uh, it was a what do you call it? A benefit concert for Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. the, the earthquake there, mm -hmm. and uh, it was our induction in, in, introduction to LA to the world. Actually, we had put out a record. Dave's not here, and then Cheech and I opened for the Stones. It was a surprise for everybody, including the Stones, and we had like eighteen, nineteen thousand people screaming and laughing and. And it was the first time, and then we, you know, got to meet the Stones and and uh, how was that? Hang with them. It was okay. You know, I'm an old musician, so I mean, I I was never impressed with their music, you know, but uh, I, you know, it's nice knowing these people. Man. But it was that was the highest point, man. Who would you? Like, who would you? Who would impress you? Who would you want to meet as a musician? The only guy I haven't, the only Beatle I haven't smoked with is uh, Paul, and my. Bucket list really is to smoke a joint with Paul McCartney. Or, a, or are you listening, Paul? A, if you uh, are, yeah, he knows. He knows. Oh, okay. I, we got friends. He he did a documentary, and and his friend that directed is friend of mine, and he told Paul, and Paul said, "Yeah, any time, mate. You know, I'm I'm with it. Yeah." Well, was any way I can make that happen? I would smoke with you. You need to give me a Xanax though, because I'll <laughs> fucking have a panic attack afterwards. <laughs> Do you smoke? I don't. I, I get no, I get too. I get anxiety. I know that. you're too. I'm you're, just too tightly. I'm not. You know, I have too much going on. You're there. that Energizer That's, Bunny. It's, it's too <laughs> fragile up there. <laughs> Tommy, I love you. I, I have to tell you, you did something. You gave me a gift. But I really, I don't know if you realize how instrumental you were in having me write that book. Because, you know, I, I remember it very clearly. I would, I would not have done it if it wasn't for you. I really would. You pushed me to do it. Um, I and, know. I challenged you. Yeah. And as a result of that, it created a life that I never, yeah. ever believed I could have. I always knew I'd make money. But that was not it. I mean, just a life that I enjoy and love and get to empower people. The respect. It have never happened without you. The respect. You're you, awesome. You, you got and you respect, treated every man. fucking person in jail the same. Yeah. Not just me, you were nice to every yeah. single person. Yeah. You were a legend. Is yeah. this thing, I want to sign this thing here. This is, we had a great thing here, this awesome picture. It'd be really cool here. Check this out in a second. Is that, is Leo. that Leo? Big, yeah. How great is this thing? No, is this a Malaysian? Uh... <laughs> it's, it's this money stuffed in the back of the frame here. It's still from the, from the good old days, you know? I'm gonna sort of right here. You know, rumor had it that, that you financed the movie. <laughs> that, that, I wish I had that much money left over from the old days, you know? <laughs> so you don't but, have to make any trips to uh, Switzerland? Nah, you know? Not anymore, eh? I'm so glad that I entered that, exited that with nothing and started fresh. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. The best thing. That money was suspect and was tainted and would bring me nothing but pain and... Yeah. Karma. Yeah. So, Bad karma. thank God. This is awesome. Check this out here, guys. Hey, nice, man. How great is this? Leo, you're a legend. The best. <laughs> All right. Do you ever hear from Leo? I do, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. he's actually... I want him to come on, but he's doing, he's, you know, he's got a new movie coming out with Tarantino, which looks really good. Oh, I heard about it. It looks really fucking good. I heard good. about it. So, it's a groundbreaker. Game. It looks really good. So, that's what I'm going to get him on here. Thanks, buddy, for coming by. Really nice. Thanks. Man. Watch Up in Smoke and buy I Chong. It's it's a great read. The, the movie's off the rails. Thanks, Joey. Take care, guys. Great, another great episode. This man is a true legend.